Hello, my name is Arthur and in this video we're looking at another implementation of the idea of a ice floor. Um, I've changed the way that it's implemented so that I could get the block, the rigid body block, to act as though it's on ice when it's on ice, as well as the player act as though it's on ice when it's on ice. So what I did to do that, and I haven't done anything with the enemy on ice yet, which I may do. I haven't decided on that one yet. Um, but what I've done so far is I've changes, changed the way that I'm implementing it. So I've taken the ice block out of the one tile map. And I've put it into its own tile map. So that I could give it its own individual friction for the block to respond to. So the block is able to respond to this friction and rather than the player checking a block ID, it checks the group that the tile map is in. So if it's in the tile map, if it's in the group ice, then the player will act as though he's on ice. Um, that simpli simplified the script for the player a little bit where he doesn't have to look for tile IDs anymore, so he just has to look if he's on on a tile map that is in the group ice. His speed would be changed for, for slipperiness, and otherwise it would go back to normal. And then the situation came up where the player could push the block onto ice. And he would be standing on ice with that movement value, jump onto the block, and still have the movement value because he never stepped on a tile that wasn't in the ice tile, in the ice group set. So I changed it so that any time the player is, is colliding with the block, it would be reset to its normal value of 0.25 but if he was pushing the block and still standing on the floor of ice um, it would again reset to to the ice value whereas if he was on top of the block coming off of the ice value he would then act as though he's not on ice so by doing that he's able to push the block onto ice, jump off of ice onto the block, and have the friction value that that would be like he was on normal floor, so the block would not act like it's ice. And all of this works, and it works fine, but in um, experimenting with it, I discovered some problems, so a physics problem, that had already existed. It existed before the ice, but with the ice in place, it was easier for me to see. And it has to do with interaction between the block and the enemy unit, which we can see the physics went crazy there. Um, half the time I've generated that error, error the block has ended up landing up here. And considering the block is here for a purpose, um, I can't have crazy physics sending it flying to places that it shouldn't be. So, there's another physics problem with the block as well that is more not that important, but kind of shows that there's some issues in the physics with with Godot and that was the situation there where the player could almost ride the block across the ice by standing in the right place on it. <clears throat> so in the enemy what I was thinking when I set up the enemy is that by setting infinite inertia to false in his move and slide that I wouldn't have issues like that that he would actually have no effect on that rigid body. But it turns out that isn't the case, um, and in a way it's kind of opposite of what the case is. 
Now, when I set infinite inertia back to its default of true and try to generate the same block flying error, um, it doesn't seem to surface. But I run into a different problem that I don't really... It creates a behavior between the block and the and the enemy unit that I don't really want. <clears throat> so I don't get the physics now, but what I get is the enemy's able to push the block around. And with the enemy pushing the block and it interacting with me, um, it opens the door for those crazy physics to be able to happen still. Which I don't want them to be able to happen because I don't want blocks being able to fly to places that would make a board unpassable. Because um, a use for a moving block like that is push it on top of the pressure switch to hold down the pressure switch while you go to the moving um, platform that was activated by the pressure switch. So the block is is as likely as not to be a necessary component of the board that you can't have flying off and landing somewhere unexpected and making the situation so that the so that the level is unpassable so what we're going to do is a little work around to make it so the enemy can't push the block around um, that should get the physics into a place where they're more predictable so what what I'll do is I'll add an area as a child of his collision shape <clears throat> and then give that a collision shape and for that collision shape I'll just make it um, a rectangle and I'll pull that out here and we'll just make it good and small it doesn't need to be big and just put it in front of them so that it's not touching any of the other physical body particularly and then we'll go send a signal um, body entered so we'll connect a body entered signal to the enemy and <clears throat> that would be if body is in group bodies and um, the rigid bodies are in the group bodies so that the player can push them without infinite inertia. Um, then he'll just do the thing he does when he's on wall. So he'll just change direction. So we'll just copy this over here. And paste it into here. And that should get him turning around rather than pushing the block. And tame the physics so that... I don't get those strange interactions between the enemy and the block and the player. So we'll just push that up. He turns around. When he encounters the block and that gets me all of the actions that I'd like. As well as the block acting like it's on ice when it's on ice. Which was more a little bit whimsical. So in the coming up videos, in the next videos, I'm going to look at that moving platform and try to come up with a kind of a hidden pressure switch. So when the player walks across it or the enemy walks across it, it'll make a click sound and um, a moving platform will start up. A hidden moving platform. Um, the block will be required to sit on top of the switch to hold the switch down and keep the the um, platform moving to be able to move the player up to to a place that he wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So kind of one of those 
<clears throat> little challenges that that are included in platformers find the switch push the block onto it to get the platform moving kind of thing which is part of the reason I don't want the enemy unit to be able to push blocks around so hopefully that was clear and I'll clean up my script on my player now um, I don't need these sections commented out I'm happy with the functionality of having a second tile map to determine the, the players on ice so yeah in the next video we'll look at something like a moving platform and get that working and until then take care